worked so hard for this and sacrificed so much and somebody could just decide on a whim to take it away from me. I wanna be in charge of my destiny. Welcome back to Hilo Lux for Luxury and Style are Attainable. We have a makeup video today and a q and It'll be a fun one. I figured we've been a little inconsistent lately, we as in me, uh, with the videos, but we're back on track now. So I figured a QA and a would be a good way to just like catch you guys up on like the last couple months. Um, I did ask me anything on Instagram, so I'm just gonna be answering a few questions. We're gonna have a good time. This video is in partnership with Bobby Brown. Um, and then I'm gonna update you on like my current makeup routine and I'm gonna show you a few like inspo eye looks, two day looks and one night look using the longwear cream eyeshadow stick. So before we get into the questions, let's go over like my everyday holy grail <laughs> makeup routine, the products that I always use no matter what. I know it's beating a dead horse, but we're gonna talk about it again. <laughs> the eye base and the face base by Bobbi Brown. This is a moisturizer and a primer. No makeup goes on my face without using these products. Um, it's a great primer, but I specifically love it because it also adds a ton of hydration. I have very dry skin, um, and this is just necessary. Even if you don't have dry skin, a great primer and keeping your skin hydrated before you apply all your foundations and powders and all that stuff, skincare is at the root of all of that. <laughs> Making sure your skin is properly moisturized and just feels good before you put anything else on, it's very important. And the eye base. A lot of people, I feel like I've tried the face base, but the eye base, equally important, especially if you are gonna put on concealer and then you're gonna powder that concealer. Like, you need to start with a good base. So, 10 out of 10, these. And you can also wear these even if you're not putting on makeup, but I don't wanna waste mine, so <laughs> I just save them for when I'm doing my makeup. Um, of course, have to talk about the foundation. Anytime you see me wearing, sorry, mine is so dirty. <laughs> I'm typically always wearing this foundation. This is the Skin Long Wear Weightless Foundation with SPF 15. I am in the shade Neutral Walnut. There are a lot of variations and like different tones and shade ranges. So I highly recommend um, swatching it this in a store. Like it took me two or three tries to find the right one because there's so many options that are so close. Um, like I've tried, what's this other one? Warm Walnut. I think I tried just like regular Walnut. There was a lot, uh, but neutral walnut, I think is like the perfect one for me. So if you're my skin tone, you can give this one a try, but um, if you can, I would go into a store, get some samples maybe, swatch a few, let them try them on you to see which one like works. And then lastly, one of my favorite, favorite, favorites is the Bobbi Brown highlighting powder. I use Bronze Glow and it is the perfect, of course I have it on, but I love highlights. I will always wear highlight, but I like it to look like I'm just glowing. Like I just turn my head and there's like, it could be just the light hitting my face. You know, there's no like thick, chunky glitter particles. It doesn't look like highlight. It just looks like sheen, but still a powder because I feel like sometimes if I use like a, you know, some type of like cream that wears off too fast. So I like to have a powder, but this is perfect Sorry, mine's is a mess. But this is perfect because it lasts all day, but it still just looks like a little glow. I love it. And again, bronze glow. I feel like that is my favorite shade. So those are my favorite, favorite, favorites that I typically have on every day. When you see me wear makeup, I have those things on. I will link them below, of course. And now we can get into the eye looks. Um, so I have nothing on my eyes, so I'm gonna like pull you in. And we're gonna get started with the first day look, which is gonna be like, just like a bronzy kind of glow. Like a simple, you know, you don't wanna do too much. Maybe you wanna wear like a bolder lip. So you wanna keep the eyes pretty, but like kind of neutral. And I'm gonna use Golden Bronze and Mica. And I'll put up which one is the new um, shade, but they're definitely just like kind of neutral. So a little closer. <laughs> And we're gonna get into the eye look again. I'm using mica, oh, so pretty, and golden bronze. And I believe mica is the newer color glow. Let's get into the first question while we do that. Uh, let's see, any big travel plans you're looking forward to this year? Um, last week we were in Mexico. 
um, with a brand and that was a lot of fun. We got to meet a lot of people. I'm just blending this out with my finger. Um, and then next week we are going to Arizona um, with a, another brand and we're very excited about that as well. So we're, not, we're trying not to um, really plan anything and just kind of like see what opportunities arise. Um, we will be going to like fashion week. So we know that's happening for sure. Um, but right now that is all of the travel. I believe I'm gonna go to Essence Fest. I won't, Josh won't go to that, um, but so I'm, I'm going to that. And then we also might be going to Bermuda. So those are all the travel plans that I <laughs> have uh, so far. See how easy that is? And I'm just keeping this on the lid and then we'll brighten it up with um, Mica, which is the new shade. <sighs> Let's see. What are your long-term goals? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Uh, I am not a planner like that. <laughs> um, I don't really actually hate planning. I'm very much a, like in the moment. Like I can't even plan a trip further out than like three months. That's just like, I don't, I don't know where my life is gonna be. So I don't even want to like commit myself to anything. <laughs> so I don't know. I hope I'm just happy. That's my only goal. If you could describe your personal style in three words, what would they be? Mm, that's a good one. Um, now I'm gonna use the mica shade and just do my inner corner. In three words, it would be classic, effortless, cool. That's, that's my goal when I'm getting dressed. Um, I like to have classic pieces. Um, you know, that I can just get a lot of cost per wear out of. I can mix and match, make a lot of different outfits. Um, I do like it to feel like I didn't try that hard. I like it to feel like I just threw it on and it happened to look amazing. Um, and then cool, I always like to add some type of little factor of coolness, even if it's like a, a very dressy glam look, um, if it's something that's very like um, preppy or toned down, I like to have some type of cool flair to it, so. Very cute. I'll do some close-ups. Let's answer another question. A little closer. Um, the next question, what made you get out of your comfort zone to become the woman you are today? Uh, it was probably, you know, working my, my previous working in my previous career. And I I worked so hard. And I think when it got to a point, if you haven't heard this story, I have a blog post about it, I'll link it below. Um, but basically I got a promotion that I worked really, really hard for and was so deserving. Like all of my peers, everyone was like, you deserve this promotion. Um, and then I got it and then it just got taken away. And it was like, my destiny was just in the hands of someone else. And at their whim, they could just take it away. All of this that I worked for, I worked so hard for this for months and months and sacrificed so much to get this opportunity. And somebody could just decide on a whim to take it away from me. And that made me wanna do more for myself. I wanna be in charge of my destiny. Of course, there's always gonna be factors and people that make decisions, but not to that scale. Like this was a huge um, opportunity. Like it was a huge, you know, differentiator in like the trajectory of my career and my future. And someone could just take it away. And that just did not sit right with me. And I guess that really changed the game. Okay, we're back wiped off the um, first look. And now the second look, don't mind the little inner corner. I didn't wanna mess <laughs> the rest of my makeup up too much, but we're just gonna cover it up, so no worries. Um, let's get a question and then we'll get started. The next look is gonna be a day look, but like a bolder pop of color. Um, and it's gonna be with pink because we know that's my favorite color. <laughs> and I'm using the shade Mulberry and the new shade Incandescent, which is so pretty. How long, this is good if you are kind of new here, but most, I feel like most people know this. How long did it take for your career as a content creator to start working out? Um, I have been doing this since 2018, so that long. Um, that is when I started, oh, let me swatch these. Woo, this is incandescent. This pink, how pretty, hopefully you can see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, stunning. Mulberry is just like a really pretty, Lummy kind of shade. Oh, they work so well together though. 
2018. 2018 is, um, is when I kind of said, let me just start posting on Instagram. I had 840 followers, I remember. Um, and I just thought to myself, let me just see um, if I can grow my Instagram. Actually, someone that I know said I should start a blog. And I was like, what is a blog? And then once I looked into it, I was like, heck no, that's way too much work. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can just grow my Instagram and maybe that'll like prove to me. Like in my mind, I was like, who cares about what I'm wearing? So I was like, if I can grow my Instagram, that'll be the proof that like maybe somebody cares. Um, so I did, I posted every day, like over the summer. And then by September, my Instagram was at 10,000 followers. So then I started a blog. Um, my first, I don't think I got like a paid campaign until like a year later. I think I had like 30,000 followers. Oh God, so pretty. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how long it's taken. Um, I was went full time in 2019, grew a lot in 2020 kind of like learned how to um, like, I guess really excel at this job in 2021 and now we're in 2022. So that is how long, oh, do you see how pretty this is? It's like, uh, it's so pretty. Let me get the next question. And it matches my necklace. Do you ever get tired of posting and holding the camera? Are you ever in the moment? I am, um, I actually, don't share that that much. Um, and I'm very thoughtful ahead of time on like when I'm going places or doing something, what I'm gonna share and how I'm gonna share it, what platform I'm gonna share it on. Um, a good example, a lot of people were asking me, um, I went on a trip last week and a lot of people were asking me for a vlog for that. I made the decision before I went that I was not gonna vlog. Um, based on my capacity. There's only so much you can do. I know myself very well. Um, it was a paid opportunity, so I had deliverables. I had TikToks I had to make. I had uh, Instagram posts I had to do. I was not gonna add vlogging on top of that. I needed to make sure I could do my job that I was being paid for very well and also be in the moment. And I knew if I was vlogging, I tr I, I'm really passionate when I vlog and I wanna you know, capture everything. I knew that would take away from the experience for me. So I made the decision not to vlog. Um, however, for my Mexico trip, there were no deliverables. You know, just kind of like a thank you trip. Um, so I decided before we went, I was gonna vlog because it would be easy. I would also be creating content, but it would be at my leisure when I, you know, feel inspired. So there was really no pressure. So I could really dedicate myself to vlogging and still enjoying myself. We made the decision to make sure like we get to relax on this trip. You know, we have some downtime. So I do that for anything that I'm going to. Like I'm going to New York, is that tomorrow? Thursday. And I've already decided um, that I'm gonna vlog. It'll be like a cute little 24 hour vlog, like 24 hours in New York kind of vlog. Um, but also I won't be like doing any TikToks. I'm not gonna bring my tripod. There's only so much I can do. And I try to balance what I have the capacity for and making sure like I have a good time and enjoy myself. So yes, I am very thoughtful about that. Some people can do everything. I cannot, and anything that I'm doing, I wanna make sure I'm also enjoying the experience, so. All right, so we have the pink on our eyes, and then I'm just gonna deepen it up in the corners. It's so pretty, I love it so much. Okay, a lot of questions around fitness, which is interesting, because I'm not like a fitness person. Um, how do I stay snatched, workout routine, that kind of stuff. Um, I made the conscious decision at the beginning of the year um, to stop weighing myself, sorry, as FedEx is outside and they're banging around, if you can hear that, um, to stop weighing myself and to stop setting um, strenuous goals or like just crazy weight loss goals and to just move my body every day, try to start cooking more and just enjoy the body I have. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. Like just try to move, do something three or four days a week and just cook a little more, which in turn usually helps me eat healthier. Um, if you are like me and you grew up in like the 90s and 2000s, as far as like 
you know, being a teenager, the media was really <laughs> about being like stick, stick thin. And, um, you know, I feel like double zero was like always the goal. And a lot of that stuff sticks with you. Um, and you don't really realize it unconsciously, but I felt like I was always striving to be the smallest version of myself. Um, and it's very unhealthy and not fun. Like even when I've gotten like to my smallest, I remember being in Italy and I was like the smallest I've been like probably since high school, like very skinny. I'll pop up a picture. Um, or my mom was like, you look really, she didn't say anything, but like when I gained a little more weight, she was like, I like this way better. <laughs> um, but I remember being on that trip and feeling big, even though I was the smallest I've been. Like I remember taking pictures and feeling like, oh, my arms still don't look great or, oh, I feel fat here. And it's all in here. So um, I, I really made the conscious decision to just enjoy the body I have. I feel like also people feel like, have I lost a little weight? Yes. And that's mainly just from moving a little bit, traveling a little more um, and cooking. But also I show my body more than I used to because I used to always wear like really oversized things because I just felt like, well, if I'm not super skinny, you know, I need to wear loose things. So my point is, um, no specific routine. I just try to do things that I like. We have a treadmill downstairs. So I'll usually like walk on the treadmill, nothing crazy or strenuous. I'll walk a mile or two and watch like a show that I enjoy the Kardashians or Emily and Parrish, just something like funny that'll keep me going. Um, and then I like to do some form of Pilates, not like crazy strenuous. I do Melissa Wood health. Um, I just put it on my computer and she has different things you can focus on, arms, abs, the full body. Um, so that is pretty much all I'm doing. But again, my goal is to enjoy myself, my body, fashion, at whatever size I am. If I happen to lose weight, that's fine. If I happen to get bigger, that's fine too. Um, I really hate when people are like, you're looking so good, did you lose weight? Either just say I look nice or like that can be such a trigger. And I feel like for people that f their weights fluctuates, like my weight always fluctuates 10 pounds through every stage of life. But it's like for people that struggle with their weight, that is such a trigger because it's reinforcing that I need to be skinny and that I should, you know, keep with the crazy weight loss goals. Like I can always lose 10 pounds in a month if I wanted to. I can't maintain it, it's not healthy, so that's why I'm trying something new. But when people make comments on your weight, it is such a trigger to be like, oh, well I should, maybe I should start running. Oh, I gotta keep it up, because now this person is saying I look good. What did I look like before? That's just a tip to anyone. But if you're one of those people who are like me and you struggle a bit, um, just try, try, and it's a mental thing. Just try to enjoy the body that you're in. There's nothing wrong with having goals, um, but enjoy the now too. So I feel like that was a long way. Come um, closer, but this is such a cute day look. I love doing a pop of color. I feel like it's just so fun, especially because, especially if I'm wearing like a, mainly neutrals, which is a lot of the time, this is a way for me to just add some fun and, and to feel like spring, summer without going too far out of my comfort zone. All right, we're back, clean eyes again. Let's get a question going and then we'll get into our sultry night look. Um, are you building your own brand as far as having another business like your own product? Yes, I am. I am in the very, very beginning stages, but I am so lucky to be surrounded by influencers, bloggers, creators that are creating brands and it's so inspiring but yes i'm in the very very baby stages like trademarking the name and like in the very beginning looking for manufacturers that kind of stuff um but yes i am working on something that i'm just so 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 excited about so yes um i am we're gonna go in with violet plum which is the new shade if it's not i'll pop one of these is but i'm doing violet plum and smoky topaz let me swatch them and oh, this is so cute it's like a really 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 deep violet purple which is so unlike me 
and then a really pretty like copper color. Let me show you. Oh, so pretty. So, oh, this is a good one. Well, it's just a quick one. Um, what's your favorite style from Brandon Blackwood? Um, I will pop up. I have two of a certain one. I think it's called the Kiwi, maybe K-E-U or something. Um, but I just got a new one and it's my favorite now. I'll pop in a video of it, but it is stunning. Oh, I love it so much. So that's my favorite now. Oh my God, look how good this looks. Look at the pigments. Oh, so cute. Okay, what's the next one? Um... Also, lots of these questions. Do we want children someday? Do you and hubby want children someday? That was in here probably um, five times. Um, I've answered this before. If we get pregnant, great. Uh, if we don't, also fine. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. Am I actively trying? No. That's, that's that on that. Oh my God, this is stunning. Look at that smoke. Look at the smoky eye with like minimum effort. <laughs> this is a good one. How did you <laughs> train your husband to take your pictures? They're, they're using the word train because that's like a trend, a uh, TikTok trend. Um, and I just made a video like that. Um, but basically, I remember um, when I started my Instagram, all of my pictures were mirror pictures. I put up some examples. Oh, that looks so good. I put up some examples, but they were all mirror pictures of my outfits. And then like after I grew it to like 10,000, I was like, oh, okay, I should probably step it up. So I remember like getting a little tripod and taking my tripod outside. And that was like so embarrassing because people were like, what the heck are you doing? Um, and so I did that for like a month. <laughs> And then I was like, okay. I was like, I think I should buy a camera. Um, and I remember, I remember asking Josh like, hey, um, I think this could be a job, like a career. If like, you could just help me take pictures on the weekend. Like it doesn't have to be every weekend, but like if we could just start, I feel like this could um, be something. And you know, he is, Josh is like the, most selfless person. He does whatever he can to help anyone. Um, so he was like, sure, I'll try. So I, I was working at Target. At the time I bought a Canon Rebel, um, like little bundle. We started with that and we just did it every, like I think we did it every other weekend at that point. And it was terrible. It was so, so terrible. Like I tell people, even when I posted that thing, it took us three years to get here to like where we take great pictures and we're still learning. Like I'm not a, you know, a model and he is not a photographer. I think he is now, but he's still learning. Um, but yeah, we just learned together. Um, and in the beginning, I really tried my best to like set him up for success because it was so hard. Like I didn't know how to pose. He didn't know how to take pictures. The pictures would be blurry or I just didn't feel cute. So I really studied like pictures that I liked and what I liked about them um, and tried to make sure I came prepared. Do I have examples that I can show him and say like, okay, I want a shot with this kind of angle. So I think you probably need to get low. And then he could like look at it and then take the picture. Um, I would try on all the outfits and practice my poses. Cause doing things in 2D, sometimes outfits just look better when they move or they look better in person. So it's like when they're flat, they just don't come across as nicely. Um, so I would pose and say like, okay, this outfit looks good shot like this or shot low or shot sitting down or whatever it is. Um, so then I would be prepared and, and I would know what to do as soon as we start shooting. Um, so that helped a lot. Having those reference pictures for him, being prepared with like how this outfit looked, how I needed to pose to make sure it looked good. And then just also being patient. Like I can't expect him <laughs> to know everything, you know, we had to like, it's a time to work on like lighting and all that stuff. And I can't expect him to have all of the answers because he's not an expert yet. So I have to be patient. I'm just doing the inner corner, but I'm bringing it up a little bit. Oh, I love this. <gasps> I love this. We are still learning, but he is super passionate about it. He's learned so much and he, 
you know, studies things on his own now, watches YouTube videos and has really kind of leaned into the art form of it. So I'm very grateful for that. Okay, next question. Look how good this looks. I'm not done. I wanna add, I think I want it go a little more dramatic, but I love this. And I would never think to wear like a purple, but it looks so, oh my God, so good. I'm debating, should I do a little liner on the bottom with the purple? I feel like I should to make it like really smoky, right? Right, I feel like you're saying yes in the comments. A few questions on editing, which I can quickly answer. Um, another decision um, I made was to stop using filters in like videos or just doing anything because it really, it really is a mind F. Um, and it's like the more you use filters, the more you like look at yourself when you're regular and think something is wrong. So my point, I'm saying all that to say, um, I don't edit my pictures. That's why like shooting with like, we shoot with an external flash and having really great quality um, equipment helps to get a better picture where like the lighting is great and you don't need to do much to it. All I use now is the Tezza app and I use the filter Coco. Um, and I might, you know, like up the contrast or make it brighter or something like that. That's all I do. And I try to do as little as possible because I also don't want to distort the image quality. I try to keep the quality as high as possible. Um, so I, when you see our pictures and I can, I'll, maybe I'll do an update it like how I edit. Uh, Cause I used to use like Facetune, but I would mainly use that if like I had a pimple and I wanted to get rid of it. Or if like I'm against a wall and there's like, you know, something really ugly on it and I want to take it away. Facetune is good for that but it can be a slippery slope. So I just try to not use anything. <laughs> um, so that is that. I use the Tezza app and I use just like the filter. Right now I'm using Coco, but it just depends on the aesthetic I'm going for. But I feel like she has a lot of good filter options that just add more like art to a picture. Um, what is your favorite part of content creation? Great question. Um, my favorite part is the creative, process i would love in another life possibly this life to be like a creative director um i love oh yeah yeah on the lord that that was that was the move um i love the start to finish i love okay i'm working with this brand coming up with the concept okay what's the product how do i want to shoot it is it is it a you know a reel a TikTok? is it a youtube video how do i want to share this with my audience what's the you know what's the brief and their expectations but like what how do i want to get this across is it a video um what is the wardrobe for it how, how do i want it to be styled where do i want to shoot it all that stuff matters when you're building a story um and i love that um, you know, if it's a if it's a video, what's the music? How do I want people to feel when they watch it and they're looking at it? I love, love, love that. That's why I still edit all of my YouTube videos because that is like the final piece of the vision. Like I need to put it all together. And I, I don't know if I'll be able to do it forever, but I need to be able to put it all together, especially vlogs. Like I know what I was thinking and how I wanted you to feel watching it when I was shooting it. So I need to put it together. I know the type of music I want you to hear when you're, I love, love 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 that um and that's just like i'm a creative person so that is super important to me yes the lower lash line was the move oh i love this so much okay i feel like do we need any more or am i just like going a little crazy i think we're good oh my god i love it okay i'm just let me just blend one more time. All right, this is our final night look. I absolutely love it. <laughs> okay, so all of the Bobbi Brown cream, eye cream eyeshadow sticks will be below all the products, of course, that I use. Everything that's on my face, um, all of my good, favorite goodies from Bobbi Brown will be in the description box below. We'll go through a few more questions. Um, so yeah, but this is the final look. I absolutely love it. I would never, ever, ever think to try purple on my eyes. But this just makes it so easy. Obviously I took a while because I was just talking, but I hope hopefully you can see how like quick and easy this is to get a more dramatic eye look and just more like interesting. Like this feels like I really took my time when really it's just like you wipe it on and you just pat it in. There's not a lot of, you know, you don't have to be an expert to use these products. And that's what I love. Mm. 
Oh, this is a good one. Best way to build your credit if you're starting from square one. I don't know square one, but I do know if you're in debt. Um, so one of the things that I had to do when I was leaving my job to do this full time is that I wanted to leave with absolutely no debt because that would just be a str another stress that I didn't want to have to worry about. I have to worry about making money to pay my bills. I don't want to have to worry about making additional money to pay off credit card debt or, you know, whatever debt. Um, so that was something I used um, Credit Karma just to like kind of keep track. But also most of like if you have credit cards, usually they'll send you um, well, the ones I had on your statement. They will have your credit report on there and then you can always just like request your credit report. Um, but I use that a lot to like just stay motivated. Also something I do when I really need to be like focused on something and very passionate about it, I have to immerse myself in it. I've done this with like when I was trying to create a blog, when I was starting my YouTube channel, I will look on YouTube and watch that type of content nonstop. So when I was really focused on paying off my debt, that's all I watched on YouTube. You know, there are people that pay off debts. Um, one of the girls, I'll put her name up, Asia Dang, I think, but I'll put, pop her name up. Um, but she was going through a payoff debt journey. And it was just so inspiring to be able to check in with people and, you know, and see what they were up to and how they were doing when, and they're doing the same thing as me. It just kept me going. I watched another like family channel um, and they were like in a ton of debt and they were like paying it off and they would just update you every week or twice a week. And it was just so reaffirming that one, you weren't alone and there were other people on this journey too. Um, and it just like kept me motivated. Like every time I would get paid, I'd be so excited to like, you know, how much I was gonna put towards this credit card, how much I was gonna put towards this debt, like whatever it was. Um, so I recommend that to just like keep on top of it and stay focused because you're immersing yourself in probably social media where people are buying things and going on trips. So you need to counteract that with people doing the same thing you're doing and having the same priorities that you have. And I felt like that helped me a lot. And it was, and I made it just like a little goal. This is not forever. But for this, you know, next six months, this is the priority. And then I have these people I can look to that are also doing the same things. Um, so just keeping track, setting a goal. I, I would use an Excel sheet because I feel like that's what all the debt payoff YouTubers were doing. <laughs> so I made like a little Excel sheet and it was just like an exciting little challenge. Like, okay, you know, I put, put this much towards it. This is how much we have left. Okay, if I get an extra, you know, brand payment this month, because I was still doing brand deals before I quit my job. Um, or, you know, if I get an extra bonus or whatever it is, if this is going towards this. I'm going to skip this thing I would typically buy and that money is going towards this. Make it a kind of challenge for you and then immerse yourself in people or surround yourself with people that are doing the same thing. That is my recommendation. Mm. Why did you decide to stay with the pixie cut? Um, I always knew I would have a pixie cut. I've had one before when I was like um, in my 20s. And at the time, I, it was just time consuming. And I feel like that was when like, you know, I used to get like sew-ins. That was like a really big thing. And you know, I just wanted to like have fun with my hair. But I always told myself I would go back to a pixie cut. I just think it really flatters me. Um, and I always liked it. I always like, my goal growing up was like Halle Berry's hair. So I always knew, I thought to myself when I'm like in my 40s, I'll go back to short hair. But then once we were in quarantine, I was just so bored and I was like, let me just see what it would look like. Um, Cause there was nowhere to go, you know? <laughs> I was just like, I'm just so, I think uh, it was like my mom came to visit and I was like, can you just help me cut my hair? Cause we used, she used to always do my hair when I was younger. So I was like, can you just help me cut my hair? I just wanna see what it looks like. So we cut it, we relaxed it and it, I probably had it like cut and like just playing around with it for like three months before I like showed it on Instagram. Um, and yeah, I just really felt like it's, I felt like me. When I cut my hair, I always knew I would. And then once I did it again, I just felt like me. It was just easy. I could do it myself. I mean, I always did my hair myself, but it just felt like me. That's the best reason why. Um, sometimes I see hairstyles and I'm like, oh, I should like put a wig on and try that. I don't like people putting me in a box and saying like, don't do this. Cause I just feel like that's not fair. People change their hair all the time. Um, but I will always come back to this. Um, I feel like, you know, sometimes I want to do something a little more fun. I'm thinking about putting a little color in it maybe, I don't know. But it just feels like me. So for now, this is what it is. Um, and I'm also still figuring it out. I feel like since I cut it, I've gotten so much better at like doing it. Um, it's also gotten so much healthier. So yeah. And what do you consider low in the high low mantra of shopping? Um, I think high end and low end are always going to be relative. Um, for me, I consider low like if I get something from Target, if I get something from Amazon, if I get something from Zara, if I get something from Mango. Um, what else? If I get something from Lulu's, 
Um, if I get something from River Island recently, um, I consider those lows. Um, I consider contemporary brands kind of like the middle of the road. Um, and that's like your Frankie shop. Um, what other brands do I really, really love? Self portrait, those kind of things. Um, those are kind of like the mid level. And then obviously there's luxury, uh, but that's what I consider lows. Um, but that's most of the questions. This was so fun. I love doing Q and A's. Um, and also let me know which makeup look was your favorite one which was the kind of like bronze daytime look, two, which was the bold pink pop of color daytime look, or three, which is what we're seeing now, which is our sultry, colorful smoky eye. It's not that colorful, but smoky eye. One, two, or three, let me know which makeup look was your favorite. Um, and of course, check out all my Bobbi Brown favorites. Um, the, the holy grail ones, I'm telling you, everyone that tries them, they let me know. Um, the Skin Long Wear Foundation with SPF, I Am Color, neutral walnut yes and this um the face base and the eye base they last so long make your fit they make your skin feel amazing 10 out of 10 highly recommend if you want to wear makeup and you want your makeup to look good on your face <laughs> and then the highlight that i shared of course i love bronze glow for my complexion that's what i have on and it just gives you a sheen it looks super natural but also gives you a good impact i also have some down the bridge of my nose which i just think is so cute um and then of course the long wear cream shadow sticks and i will just put the colors by each look so that's not confusing. So I think that's everything. Thank you again to Bobby Brown for sponsoring this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by. See ya.